How do you best respond succinctly when someone asks, why does evil happen? Our God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases, period. That would be one way. I can think of several others. But before I would embark on this big theological question, I'd like to get some understanding of the person's motive. If they are just looking to, you know, what about evil and all the bad thing? And if God is all powerful and all loving, then why is there evil? He must not be all powerful and all loving. Oh, if they're just looking for a fight, you are probably wasting your time. Anytime you engage in a witness encounter, open air preaching, you're trying to persuade somebody of the truth. If they just want to fight, I would like to suggest to you, you're probably wasting your breath. Not always. Sometimes God can work past that and it can just be a facade. But maybe you want to just back things up a little bit and ask them if they're sincere in their question before you spend some time explaining it in one of several ways. You could give him the Job explanation. All right, so let me get this straight. Unbeliever, you're questioning why evil exists as if to impugn God's integrity. Got some questions for you. Where exactly were you when God created the world? Do you know how to make animals give birth? Do you know how to make the sea come this far and no further? You could simply give them the Job response via Romans 9. Who do you think you are? Pot criticizing the potter. That is one valid way to respond to the accusation that God must not exist if evil exists, because if it does, and we don't like it, and God is all powerful and all loving, then we've undermined the credibility of his existence. Who do you think you are to accuse God or to ask him questions about the way that he operates the universe? If there is evil, it is because God has chosen to permit that thing because it is best. He has ordained it. He sovereignly runs the universe. And how dare we ask an accusatory question? However, there's other ways to answer the question. You could explain that God has a morally justifiable reason for the existence of evil, and that is to demonstrate his mercy, grace, and loving kindness, because without evil, he wouldn't need to send his son to die for sinners. That demonstrates how amazingly kind he is. So because of evil, we get to understand God's goodness better, and that is worth it according to God. There would be a third way that you could explain the existence for evil and why God has ordained its existence, and that is by simply pressing them. How would you suggest God should have done all of this? You see, God chose to put two representatives on the planet, Adam and Eve. They represent you and me. They chose to sin. Why? Because God gave them a free will. And that is why evil was introduced through man's actions. My dear unbelieving friend, would you have preferred that God made Adam and Eve without choice? Would you prefer that we didn't have free will because we are no different than Adam and Eve? We joined them in their rebellion, and if you think that we would have done better than they, we most certainly would not have. They chose evil. We choose evil. Would you rather not have free will and choice? God gave it to them in the garden. They blew it. Man is responsible for evil, not God. Those are the three ways four ways perhaps that I can think of that you can respond to the question. But don't try to leave it there. It is a perfect segue to ask that person, you know, as long as you brought up the subject of evil, do you think you're evil? And nobody is going to say yes. You know what? Now that you bring it up, I am terrible. Adolf Hitler looked like a choir boy compared to me. No, nobody says that. Every man proclaims his own goodness with his mouth. Everybody thinks they've done good. The Bible says nobody does good. No, not one. So use this accusatory question to ask some questions yourself. Do you think you're evil? What is the standard for evil? Do you think that you have committed evil deeds yourself? Another response, by the way, to the evil accusation is, how do you even know that evil exists? How do you even know that things are bad without God? This is an opportunity for us to do what? Not just defend the faith and just, hey, I got that one. Okay, okay, I grabbed, I grabbed that accusation. No, use it 
to go on the offensive and wield the sword of God's word, specifically opening up the law so that they understand sin and its exceeding sinfulness and how they have it in their own hearts, then you can proclaim the good news that while we were yet evil people, Jesus died for us any time you're engaged in a conversation and people are kind of shooting their typical hey, I saw this on YouTube, and hey, I've got this, and there's mistakes in the Bible, and it's like telephone. Sure, we can use our apologetics to bat those away, but also be on the lookout how you can use them to preach the law and the gospel. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is... Uh 